And finally, New Rule, let's not forget that today, May 1st, is the anniversary of the day in 2003 when George Bush landed on an aircraft carrier and prematurely announced mission accomplished in the Iraq war. And somehow, possibly because Obama's a ninja warrior, today, May 1st, is also the day in 2011 when he actually accomplished the mission by ordering SEAL Team 6 to kill bin Laden. So I say, let's make May 1st a holiday and call it National Do This, Not That Day. Or as they used to say on Romper Room, be a Mr. Do Be, not a Mr. Don't Be. Now, how many of you boys and girls remember Romper Room? For you millennials, Romper Room was this show they used to have on for preschoolers to bore you into taking a nap <laughs> in the days before Ritalin. <laughs> and two of the recurring characters on it were Mr. Doobie, who was always doing everything right, and Mr. Don't Be, who was a huge fuck up. <laughs> and I credit Romper Room with making me a person who always wanted to do everything right. Which is why to this day, people refer to me as Mr. Doobie. <laughs> At least I think that's why. Anyway, Romper Room went off in 1994, which is a shame because Mr.'s Doobie and Don't Be would have been perfect to help us illustrate our national do this, not that day. For example, after an attack on America, Mr. Don't Be panics and invades the wrong country. <laughs> Mr. Doobie focuses on the real attacker and shoots him in the face. <laughs> Mr. Don't Be makes up stories about nukes in Iraq that don't exist. Mr. Doobie makes a treaty with Iran so they don't build nukes at all. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Don't Be tortures prisoners. Mr. Doobie says, that sounds bad. <laughs> Mr. Don't Be gets his actionable intel from Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Doobie gets his from tapping your phone. Mr. Doobie's best foreign policy move brings our casualty rate down by over 60%. Mr. Don't Be's best foreign policy move was dodging a shoe. <laughs> well, you get the idea. I don't mean to make it sound all black and white, but, you know, we were baited, baited into an unnecessary war that cost thousands of lives and trillions of dollars, and what did it really get us besides an Oscar nomination for Bradley Cooper? <laughs> Islamic extremists run places where they never even existed before, and ISIS was created. ISIS, who's now trying to do the same thing to us. Bait us. They say shit in your pants, and we say how much? <laughs> We've learned nothing. The Republican campaign trail today is the same empty tough guy talk from chicken hawks. Same as it was in 2003. Mike, Mike Huckabee says, you don't try to reason with a snake, you get a shotgun and take the snake's head off. Or how about this, you leave the snake alone. Just this once, go to church and handle something else. You know, I... <laughs> I've been in the woods, and I've never once had a snake problem that couldn't be solved by distance. <laughs> distance. Pretty much any terrorist who ever attacked us and lived to tell why has said some variation of the same thing. Hey, idiots, we don't hate you for your freedom. We could give a goat shit about your freedom. We hate you for your proximity, because you're there in our land. If it helps you conservatives, think of it this way. You don't like Mexicans in your country and all they want to do is mow your lawn. <laughs> the old plan of let them hate us so long as they fear isn't working. Let's try absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> President Obama once said, we need to do more than end a war. We need to end the mindset that got us into war. Yes. The mindset.
a mindset that centuries-old blood feuds are going to be resolved because we said so. The mindset that star-spangled American freedom is the salve that heals all wounds. When everyone knows, that's Jägermeister. 